And Allah challenges them, not just anyone. Get your teams of scientists, of linguists, of experts. Get the whole world. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And yeah, you're most welcome. Thank you guys for supporting us thus far, for liking, sharing, commenting, suggesting. We're very, very grateful. So today, I'm actually going to be reacting to the Quran that Allah recited, mind blowing, and yeah, I'm very, very excited for this. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. A fundamental tenet of Islam is to believe that the Quran is Kalamullah. And what does it mean, Kalamullah? It literally means, this is what Ahlul Sunnah, this is what Muslims believe, that Allah Azza wa Jal recited the Quran to Jibreel. And that Jibreel brought it down to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he then recited it to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then the Prophet recited it to us and the Sahaba to the Tabi'un, the Tabi'un to the Taba Tabi'un, and so on and so forth. That the Quran, it is the actual kalam that Allah spoke, and therefore the Quran has an element of divinity within it. The Quran has something divine within it. And that is why the Quran, you need to have wudu to touch the Mus'haf. To touch the Quran, you need to have wudu to touch it. Because it is not just a book of men. That a woman in her menses or the man in the janaba, as we know, is not allowed to do tilawa of the Quran. That the person in ruku' or sujood, the Prophet ﷺ said it is not allowed when you're in ruku' or sujood to do tilawah of the Qur'an. Because it is in its own way divine. The Qur'an is kalamullah and kalamullah means it's of the attributes of Allah. And therefore, you're not allowed to swear by the Kaaba, but you can swear by the Qur'an. You cannot say, I swear by the Kaaba, I'm telling the truth. Once Ibn Umar was doing tawaf and two men began arguing. One of them said, I swear by the Kaaba, I'm speaking the truth. And Ibn Umar said, don't swear by the Kaaba. Swear by the Rabb al Kaaba, the Lord of the Kaaba. The Kaaba is something created. The Kaaba is not divine. It is holy, sacred, but it's not divine. We cannot swear by the Kaaba. But the Quran, we can swear by the Quran. And the Prophet swore by the kalimatillah, a'udhu bi kalimatillah tamma. I seek refuge in Allah's speech. I swear by Allah's speech. In the Muslim courtroom, you're allowed to take the Mus'haf and put your right hand on it and swear to tell the truth. Because the Quran has something divine about it. And therefore, brothers and sisters, when we discuss what is the Quran, we cannot follow the way of the previous nations, the, uh, the Jews and Christians, with the way that they treated their book. Because there's now this pressure on us that, why do you have to take your book so literally? Many people say to us, our Bible also says things, we don't believe in it. Our Bible also says things, we've rejected it. Why can't you get with the program? Why can't you also follow this? You see, it's a very simple response. Your Bible, we believe as Muslims, is a mixture of the words of men and the words of God. It's history and sunnah and, and, the, uh, and Allah's speech all mixed up. It's not the actual speech of Allah. This is the Bible according to John, according to Paul, according to Matthew. Alhamdulillah, we have the Quran according to Allah. We don't have it according to anybody. So when Allah is speaking to us directly, we have no authority to cut and paste it. And you know what? The fact of the matter is we know this simply by reading the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran has described many of the miraculous matters that the Quran has. You all know that of the first verses of Baqarah, Allah says, فَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِّمَّا نَزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ وَدُعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ كُنْ صَادِقِينَ فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا Allah says, if you are in doubt, is this the speech of God or not? You don't know? I challenge you to do what? To produce one surah like it. Go ahead, Bismillah. Go ahead. And Allah challenges them, not just anyone. Get your teams of scientists, of linguists, of experts. Get the whole world, Allah says. Everybody other than Allah. And then see if you can produce one surah similar to the Quran. 
And then Allah Azza wa Jal seals the challenge. فَإِلَّمْ تَفْعَلُوا If you cannot, وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا And you will not. Look at how firm is this speech. Allah is not, He knows. If you cannot and you will never be able to do it, then fear the fuel whose, who fear the fire whose fuel is men and stones. So the Quran is the miracle that our Prophet ﷺ received from Allah Azza wa Jal. The miracle is so powerful that the angels will ask, as Allah says in the Quran, that anybody who ended up in hell, the angels will say, Alam Yatikum Rusulum Minkum, Yatluna alaykum ayati rabbikum. Didn't the Prophet come and do tilawa of the book? The angels will ask the people of hell, like how could you be here? How could you end up here? Didn't you hear the tilawa yet luna? They were doing tilawa to the book. When you heard the book, how could you have rejected? The angels are stuck, shocked that how can this happen, right? The, the Quraysh, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us, the Quraysh asked the Prophet Sallallahu that وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلْ عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ The Quraysh said, why doesn't he get more and more miracles? We want to see more miracles. And what does Allah say? أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ أَنَّا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ Isn't it enough of a miracle? أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ Aren't they satisfied with this miracle? What miracle? That we have sent the book that يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ That is, their tilawa is done to them. Listen to the Quran, Allah is saying, there is your miracle. And this shows us, brothers and sisters, that the miracle of the Quran is a very unique miracle. It's a type of miracle that is unprecedented in human history. The Prophet ﷺ said, hadith is in Bukhari, every single Prophet was given miracles because of which his people believed in him. Every single Prophet was given miracles because of which his people believed in him. Let's pause here before we go on. Let's give some examples. So, uh, the miracles, let's say, of Musa. We all know the miracles of Musa, right? What did he do? The staff, the hand, all of these other tis'a ayat. Allah mentions nine signs. The miracles of Isa. What are the miracles of Isa? Yes, Raising the dead by the, by the permission of Allah. Healing the leper, curing the blind, etc., etc. And we notice that every prophet, he performed miracles. For example, Salih, right? What did Salih do? The Naqa, the, the camel. And if you look at it, every miracle, this is an interesting point here, understand this. Every miracle.
I don't know why I lost the sound halfway through but what's Tilawa and also I have to agree with the fact that he states that people think perhaps they invented this or they have the power to invent this and then someone comes and proves that someone else actually invent, invented it. It just shows how much or the little we know about the past. I always say when you decide to look into something, you really discover things that you didn't know before. For now we know this kind of world. For now we know how to use these phones without um with very few buttons. But before it was a different story. Now we know this this was done, but before everything about religion was different. Look at religion now. Different. Back then we have to look into it to understand how things are done, how uh, our ancestors our ancestors prayed how they did things is way different from the way we do things now so many people are so focused on proving that they're religion that's why we can't even agree on the same thing otherwise i love this video also i just love the video let me know what you actually think about this video itself what are your thoughts what did you get from this also i like the fact how He's point blank telling you that God has done all these things before and no man is greater than him. I, that's the message I picked up from this video myself. But yeah, so make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.